So the main trick with using JavaScript to access and edit things on your web page is to traverse the DOM. So let's first remember what the DOM is. Okay, so DOM is short for Document Object Model. So basically when you, um, when you code up an HTML page and the browser opens that up, it makes a map of all the elements and it kind of looks like a tree. Um, and each of the elements becomes a node of the tree. So if we take a sample page like this, um, our top node, our root, is HTML because that's the most outer element of the entire thing. And then our head section um, is our first branch over here. And there's the tags that the head contains title and style, which you can see over here, title and style. Um, and then on the other branch from HTML is our body or the stuff that we can see on the page. In this particular example, there's an H1 and a P. So here's my nodes H1 and P. And then connected to each of these elements is the actual contents that it contains. So my title is the DOM, my style has an H1 rule, my H1 says the page, and my P says hello world. So if I can ask JavaScript to grab one of these elements from the DOM, then I can ask it to change what the contents are, I can have it change the color, I can have it change the styling, I can add new information into it. Uh, etc. But all I have to be able to do is use the document object model to grab one of these elements. So let's see how you do that. Okay. So step one is find the DOM node that you want and store it in a variable. And step two is use um, one of various methods that already exist in JavaScript to edit and change the node. Um, so the first overall one that you can do is to grab basically the entire document um, and so instead of writing to the console which you have to open up the, the developer tools and everything to see what's writing there you can actually have it write stuff directly onto the page you just have to be aware that when you use this method it cuts out anything that was already on the page that was rendered so it's really only for testing out your code to see if you're getting what you think you're getting but here's kind of what it looks like um, the access to the overall document node is the word document, and then the method is dot write. And inside here, you can put whatever you want. It can be text. It can have tags. Um, you can have tags that then include an image, and that stuff will appear on the page. Um, but again, this will overwrite anything that's already been rendered on the page. Okay. Um, that's nice for debugging and trying to figure out what's going on, but really we want to be able to access individual nodes so you can change particular elements on the page. So let's look at some different ways you can find the nodes. Okay. Um, and so the first thing um, we need to remember actually is the difference between an ID and a class. So please remember that an ID um, indicates that there's only one element on the page that has that ID. Um, you won't find more than one thing marked with the same ID. And class um, gives you a lot of the same control, but more than one element on the page can have the same class. And so we'll remember in CSS, IDs are marked with hashtags, and in uh, CSS, classes are marked with dots to specify we have an ID or a class. Okay, so with that in mind, one of the first things we can do to find a node is if it has an ID, we can look for that particular ID. So here's kind of what it looks like. Um, we always start with the word document, that means grab at the root, and then find this thing. So here's the command, it's get element by ID. The capitalization is very important, so please make sure you notice which things are capitalized. And then inside the parentheses, you put the ID that you want to search for. Okay, so here's my example, based on this little segment of HTML up here. I only have one thing on the page that has an ID, my ID is example. So when I do this, I'll set a variable, I'm going to call it xText and set that equal to document.getElementById example, and that will grab this node right here, and then I can mess with the contents of that node. Okay, so that's finding a node by ID. Um, I can also find a node by tag name. So here's the general way that this looks, document.getElementById tag name, tag name. Um, you'll notice here the big difference is the word elements instead of element. Because for most tags on a web page, there's probably going to be more than one of them. Um, so this gives you a little hint. This is going to give you back a list or an array of elements or nodes um, instead of just one. So here's my example. I've got an unordered list. It's got two list items on it. I'm going to set a variable called list items equal to document.get elements by tag name li. 
and that should get me the list of these two elements. Um, and since so they're now inside of an array, if I want to access and do stuff to them, I'm going to loop over them and do that. So I'm going to loop from zero to list items that length. That way I'm, I'm writing this generally, even though I know right here there's two of them. If there were three or four, this would still work. And then I can grab out the individual pieces. If so, var item equals list items y. That would grab this first one. The second time through the loop would grab this guy. And I can do something to that once I have a handle on it. Um, my next option is to find a node by class name. So here um, it's going to look real similar. Again, it's document.getElements. Remember, note the S here because classes can repeat on the page by class name. And then the parentheses, I'll put the class name that I'm looking for. On my page here, I've got an H1 with class red, and I've also got a P with class red. So when I do this, I'll set my var red list equal to document.getElements by class name red. And again, because there's more than one of them, it's going to return an array. So now I'm going to have to iterate or loop through that list to do whatever to the individual nodes. Okay. So again, just to, to highlight this fact, if a method starts with get element, that means it's going to give you back a single node that you can then operate on directly. If a method name starts with get elements, that means there's more than one of them. Even if there actually is just one on the page, it's still going to store that in an array. So you're going to have to operate through the list to get to the individual pieces. So again, even if really you know there's only one thing on the page with a class called red, um, it's still going to put that one item into an array because this is how this generally works. Okay. So once you've got one of these things, you can change basically any attribute of it. So you found the node. And to get to the attribute, you use a dot notation. So what do I mean by that? Well, once you've got it stored in a variable, so this is my variable name, I say dot, and then I'll put the name of an attribute, and then equals new value. So if we think of different val attributes, here uh, in my example is an IMG tag, its attributes that we're seeing are ID and source. Well, it might be interesting to change the picture, so let's store var pick and set it equal to document dot get element by ID pick, because this guy has an ID of pick, and let's change the source property. So here I've got my variable, so I'll say pick.src equals kittens.jpg. So now instead of having puppies.jpg as the source, it has kittens.jpg as the source, and that would swap out the picture on the page. Okay. When I'm thinking of attributes that I might commonly want to change for images, a lot of time it's going to be src. Um, if I want to change the words that an element contains in its text, the value is actually inner HTML. Notice that's all caps. And that will get into the text that's inside that element. Okay. Um, in addition to just setting that equal to some text inside quotes, I can actually stick tags in there. So I can, if I have a paragraph, I can shove an image in it if I want to, or I can shove like a list in there. Okay. Um, if I have uh, a form and I want to mess with the words on a button or something, then my attribute would be dot value. And those are just some common things that you might want to change. Okay. I can also change the style of an item using JavaScript kind of the same way. So the generalized syntax is to say node. So I will have found or gotten it by ID or class or whatever. And then dot the word style. And that's always going to be the word style. And then dot property name equals new value. Now there's one little tiny thing to note here. If in CSS, the property name usually has a hyphen, then when you write it in JavaScript, instead of putting the hyphen in, you take it out and you capitalize the first letter of the second word. Okay. So here's my example. I'm going to get all the P tags on a page. So I've get elements by tag name P, and then I'm going to loop through. So I'm going to set var i equals zero. i is less than parags.length, i plus plus. And I'm going to grab one at a time and set its dot style dot color to whatever color this is. So now all of them have been changed to a different color. Okay. So there's one important note um, when you start doing this, um, and that's if your JavaScript tries to access a piece of the DOM that hasn't finished um, being built, then it will fail. And it won't give you an error message or anything. It just won't happen. So you have to be careful about when you ask your JavaScript to make changes. Um, one thing you can do, and this is, this is kind of just because of where we are right now, but usually we're going to respond to actions 
to make things happen. But what you can do if we're just making changes outright when a page loads is you can make sure that your script is at the bottom of the page so that the rest of the document will have had time to load before it tries to access those pieces with your JavaScript.